work really hard, so we like to be lazy about some other things, like our naming. Basically, you'll see us use Dalton when we mean gram per mole, and kill Dalton, which means a thousand gram per mole. You'll see both of these used often when you're dealing with protein molecular weights, so the gram per mole of a protein. And we can be even lazier when we talk about proteins and do a kind of like quick back of the envelope calculation in our heads to go from the number of amino acids to the molecular weight and vice versa. Why we can do this is that the average molecular weight of an amino acid is about 100 Daltons or 0.1 kilodaltons because there's 1,000 Daltons in a kilodalton. So what we can do is if we know the number of amino acids, then we just divide by 10 and that's gonna give us the approximate kill Daltons. Now it's not exact because the number, the size of different amino acids varies and different proteins have different combinations of amino acids. So if you've got a protein with a bunch of glycine, well that guy's really small, it's gonna bring that down. If you got a bunch of tryptophan, we'll bulk you up. And so it's just an average and it's just kind of not even an exact average, but it's just like, it's nice to be able to just move your decimal place one and you get the approximate uh, molecular weight in kilodaltons. Want it in Daltons? We'll just go ahead and multiply it by 100. That's the same as dividing it by 10 and multiplying it by 1,000. Um, similarly, if you wanted to go the other way or whatever. Basically, either way, you'll get Daltons, you'll get kilodaltons. You can interconvert between Daltons and kilodaltons super duper easy, just a thousand fold. And by just going divide by 10, the number of amino acids, you get the molecular weight in kilodaltons, approximate and um, multiply by 100, you get it in Daltons, approximate. Remember, these are just the approximates. Um, and you can similarly go the other direction. So if you know that a protein is about 33 kilodaltons, you can estimate that it has about 33, um, about 330 amino acids. So as you can see, our actual protein, um, Dalton's molecular weight is 35,562.4, but 33, it's close. And it's close enough for if you're trying to see if the band is the right size on your gel, or if you're trying to figure out what size of a molecular weight cutoff to use. So molecular weight cutoff, or MWCO, that's telling you about the size of the pores in these membranes. And so this is a dialysis tubing. Um, basically, sometimes you might see this called like snake skin or stuff like that. It's basically this thin tubing that you can make a pouch for that you can keep your protein in and let small stuff come out. Similarly, these have a molecular weight cutoff. So these spin concentrators or these ultra filtration devices, they have a molecular weight cutoff too. Um, and basically that tells you that you're, anything bigger than that's gonna get stuck up here where the little stuff like all that liquid you're trying to pull out so you can concentrate your protein is gonna go through. In either case, you wanna make sure your protein stays where you want it. And so you wanna make sure that the, the protein is bigger than the molecular weight cutoff. You also see um, like these sorts of things used for like DNA, RNA, big stuff, like big ones of them. Um, so remember that uh, mRNA is actually like more massive than the protein it encodes for. Yes, because you've got three codons and that's a big and yeah, okay, but cool. More on that in another post. But sometimes it's just easy to forget that, whoa, mRNA is really big. But how big is our protein? Well, we can figure out how big our protein is and then we can figure out what size molecular weight cutoff to use in order to make sure that our protein doesn't escape. And so what's a little confusing is that you want to, you, you don't just want to be below the, you don't just want your molecular weight cutoff to be below the molecular weight of your protein. Instead, you want it to be like well below. So at least like lower than like half the molecular weight of your protein. So for example, our protein has a molecular weight of about 35.6 kildaltons. If we round up to six, um, to 36, divide that by two, we get 18. So we want to have a molecular weight cutoff that is 18 or lower. Now, they don't really make molecular weight cutoffs in like sizes like 18 typically. So instead you'll see like eight and you'll see three. Um, you'll see five sometimes, 10, 30, a um, hundred. They make some weird sizes, but they don't wanna make a size for every single person's specific needs. And so how do you choose? Well, you wanna make sure that you have one that is, that lo is low enough. And so you might be wondering like, okay, well, why do I need to go that much far below? Well, because that's an estimate of, like that's the average of the pore size. And so it's saying that like, on average, it won't let things through, like the pores on average won't let that through. But if your protein is really precious, you don't want any of your protein going through. And so that's why you want to go it high above. 
So you might be wondering now, well, why don't we just always use a really, really low kill Dalton, um, molecular weight cutoff? Well, that's because it's going to take forever. Think about putting water through, like, something with big holes versus something with really tiny holes. Even with the centrifuging helping, it's going to take forever to concentrate your sample. Um, so it was not ideal to do it in a 3,000 molecular weight cutoff, um, but that was what we got. And so thank you, huge thank you not to be ungrateful to the um, Chris Burns and who donated it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but anyway, it took a really long time to concentrate, but we finally concentrated it down, so all's good. If we had a higher molecular weight cutoff, well, then it wouldn't take as long, but we would have a risk of kind of losing some of our protein. So at least this way, we didn't lose any protein, and all's good. We got lots of protein. Okay, so this actually has the molecular weight cutoff written in terms of Daltons. So it says 3,000 molecular weight cutoff. That's talking in terms of Daltons. If we were talking in terms of kill Daltons here, 3,000 kill Daltons, that's going to be huge. That's going to be like a mega Dalton. So sometimes you'll get like protein complexes that are that like huge. Um, our protein is not that huge. Typically proteins are not that huge. If you see something in like thousands, that's probably talking in Daltons. But if you see something in KD or KDA, that's going to be kill Daltons. Um, and so remember, just a thousand kill Daltons. Um, or a thousand Daltons in a kilo Dalton. Don't confuse KD and KDA and all this stuff. Sometimes people abbreviate the kill Daltons KDA. They abbreviate it KD. I do not recommend doing that because, well, KD is like a kinetic constant. Just remember that if you see it and they're used as kill Daltons, it's going to be a little K and a big D. And that just means a thousand grams per mole. One last word, if you probably stuck around this long, you probably know what a mole is. But anyway, it's just 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It's Avogadro's number. I like to think of it as kind of like a chemist's dozen. So instead of saying, we, instead of saying like one protein, one copy of a protein weighs this much, which would be a really, really, really tiny amount, we say 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd copies of a protein weigh this amount, which is still a really small amount, but it's easier to think about. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of, a bigger unit but it's a way we can compare the size of proteins like compare between proteins so a 30 kilodalton protein is going to be bigger than a 15 kilodalton protein but smaller than a 60 kilodalton protein all that good stuff and then remember that basically you can just estimate from amino acids two kilodaltons or, or two daltons and vice versa because the average amino acid residue molecular weights about 100 daltons or 0.1 kilodaltons and so just a quick note so residue basically when the amino acids join together they lose they link up and they lose part of like their their termini and stuff and so that's going to be smaller um again it's just an approximation though so it doesn't really matter you can just say amino acid but anyway that's going to be about 0.1 kilodalton um, and then, so the number of amino acids divided by 10 will give you your about your molecular weight in kilodaltons. Number of amino acids times 100, about your molecular weight in daltons. Um, then molecular weight in kilodaltons multiplied by 10 is about the number of amino acids. And the molecular weight in daltons divided by 100 to get about the amount of amino acids in your protein. And so when you work with proteins a lot, you kind of get good at doing this mental map. Um, and you'll see these terms used. You'll see the bands on the, on the gel be like kill Daltons and that sort of thing. Um, you'll see sometimes things in Daltons. Don't let it trip you up. Don't let the term Dalton trip you up. It's just a gram per mole. And yeah, happy working with proteins.